join me inside my writing yurt. Come on. Hi, I'm Thomas, Marie's cozy language consultant, and welcome to my writing yurt for another edition of Ask Cozy Grammar. We've entered the springtime in all of its glory, and so today, rather than making a fire in the stove, I decided to bring a burst of flowers into the yurt. So these are some flowers I picked outside uh, to brighten up uh, our time together. We have a lot of questions, so I wanted to jump right in. Our first question comes from Juanita B, uh, writing from Vancouver, BC, and she asks, what is the difference between then with an E and then with an A? Now, I think this is an excellent question. Then with an E and then with an A are what linguists call homophones. Now, that's just a fancy term meaning the same sound. Phone actually means sound or, or voice. When we talk on the telephone, we are talking with our voice, the sound of our voice over a distance. That's what the word tele refers to. Um, you may have seen homogenized milk in the store or heard of the word homogenous. That has to do with things being the same. So homophone simply means the same sound. So the word then with an E and the word then with an A both sound the same, but they have different meanings. And to show these different meanings on the page, they have different spellings. Now, this means that we can use these words in speech when we're talking out loud with each other perfectly fine, but then maybe when we get to writing them on the page, we might mix them up. Do I put then with an E or then with an A? Um, and there are certain circumstances in which that can make a difference. This uh, is something that Marie talks about I think quite eloquently at the very beginning of the Basic Cozy Grammar course. So I thought I'd bring her in as well and share what she has to say about what are those occasions when it's uh, important to speak or write grammatically, and what are those occasions when it's okay to be uh, colloquial or informal. I'm going to take you to uh, our Cozy Grammar website. There we go. And underneath free resources at the top, you will see our learning treasure trove. This is where you can search through all of our free newsletters and tips and videos and offerings. On the right side of the screen, you'll see the different topics that you can search for. We also have something down here where you can search for specific ideas and themes. I want to take us to one on colloquial language. This will bring up the Grammar Love and Colloquial Language newsletter in which Marie talks about her principle about when we need good grammar. Now I'll play this video for you so you can see this uh, for yourself because this is a live Zoom call. The video might be a little bit stuttery. Uh, it'll be much clearer if you go to the website itself, which is why I wanted to show you how to get there. But let's just take a little peek at Marie's principle. There are many occasions in life where good grammar is important, such as writing a resume, being interviewed, applying for a job, speaking in public, writing formal letters or emails, and many, many, many more. I have a rule that I try to follow, and that is, when I am in a public or formal setting, I try to speak as correctly as possible. But when I'm at home or with friends, I relax and speak colloquially. That just means in a casual way. For example, in a formal situation, I might say, hello, how are you? Whereas in a casual or colloquial setting, I may say, Hi, what's up? Both ways of speaking are fine, but it is important to have the skills to speak and write correctly when necessary. So that's a little taste of Marie's approach to those situations in which good grammar, both in our spoken 
expression and in our written language can be very important. Now then and then, with an E and with an A, is an interesting one because we can be perfectly able to use it out loud and then mix them up in speech, as I mentioned before. So for this reason, I have come up with um, uh, a trick or a, a tip that I share with my students that I think is a very helpful way to remember the difference between then and then. Here's how it goes. The word then with an E has to do with time, when something happens. Now notice that the word time ends in the letter E. And the word then referring to time has the letter E. Or you can also notice that the word then rhymes with the word when. This is also a word having to do with time and they both use the letter E. So for example, I'll give you a sentence using the word then with an E. I went and picked the flowers, then brought them inside my cozy writing yurt. Then because we're talking about when I brought the flowers into my cozy writing yurt, we use the word then with an E because we're talking about time, about when, time with an E, when with an E. Then with an A, on the other hand, has to do with comparisons or with a contrast. Now here, notice that both the word comparison and the word contrast have the letter A in them. This is a handy way you can remember that the word then with an A has to do with a comparison or a contrast. For example, this frog is bigger than that frog. Here, because we're comparing the size of my two frogs, we are making a comparison, we're making a contrast, comparison with an A, contrast with an A. Therefore, we use the word then with an A. This frog is bigger than that frog, or that frog is shinier than this frog, or whatever we might be comparing. Thank you, frogs. Now, what I've just shared with you is a kind of mnemonic device. That simply means a memory tool or a memory trick by which we remember some idea or concept that's easy to forget. If we think of then with an E and then with an A in the abstract, uh, we may lack something to hang a solid understanding from. Is it the E or is it the A? However, if we give ourselves some easy to remember trick, like, oh, then with an E has to do with time, which ends with an E, or with when, which also has an E in it, then we won't forget the difference. Same thing with the word then with an A, comparison, contrast. I do this all the time. For instance, a couple weeks ago for Ask Cozy Grammar, I also shared a simple trick for remembering the difference between effect with an E and effect with an A. And I invite you, if you're curious, to check that out on our website or on our YouTube channel. In any case, that is my suggestion to Juanita B for how to remember the difference between then with an E and then with an A. I hope that helps you.